Okay, sure. Jayam, you are celebrating your birthday this week and I brought you something um, for you to keep. A very young looking Siabonga Radushin goes. <laughs> a very innocent looking one. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is wonderful. Ne? I remember, I remember, uh, I remember this edition. I think it was the first uh, front page interview for a player outside of Chiefs and Pirates the big three, and yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 first yeah, one, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, has there ever been another one? No, of course not. No, of course not. So you've done very well. Congratulations, not man. Not bad, eh? Yeah. Not bad. On, um, uh, this, uh, this, is, this is the best uh, birthday gift, my man. Thanks a lot. Ne? I appreciate it. No, Christoph, I, I, I read the interview and I was like, You've not changed a bit on on on, on um, being straightforward and being honest and mm, mm, yeah. Mm. So happy birthday, man! Ukule, ukoko be, ukule koko be. You had scored, thanks, you had scored the um, uh, the winning penalty leading to uh, to the finals. the finals. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember it was, it was against Pyros, right in Durban. Ne? Yeah, I remember that. So. Very difficult moment. Yeah. It was, the last, it was the last penalty, I think. Yes, it was the last penalty. And if I score that one, then you are going through. In fact, you are quoted here yeah, saying that it was a very difficult moment for you. But yeah. we are going to get to that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, join me uh, on La Lachela today um, with my boy, Siabong Angosi. Ndozo's uh, finest. Uh, the Kaiser Chiefs legend, former Bafana Bafana. Um, yeah, obviously this uh, being uh, the first anniversary interview, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, please don't forget to hit that notification button so that you don't miss any of our content. Uh, subscribe to our channel and for everyone who has been watching, thank you so much for your support. Jayam, um, where does it all start for you, uh, football? Football-wise, uh, football-wise, it starts in Ndozo. and you, you know, certain things just come naturally. Yeah, because I remember that I think I was like four or five, and already uh, I was passionate about football, playing in the streets, uh, and already showing potential. Because to show potential at that early age, that means something. Uh, so I remember it was me and this other friend of mine, the uh, Sipo. Okay. Uh, we were very close from then. So I remember that when, 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 when the other kids would pick teams, then they would split us, separate us, one on the other side and one on the other side because of the kind of potential we okay. possessed, that, they sh that we showed. So to strengthen their teams, they would pick one on this side and the other one on the on that side. Imagine from the uh, days of, cre of creation, you know, preschool, then you, you already showing those uh, those kind of signs and then it grew uh, from there because there was constant uh, informal yeah sort of, uh, uh, football engagement football you know, involvement in the streets and, and, and in those small fields that you created in the uh, back in Mendoza. and then i think when i was like eight nine ten Already they started fearing me when it comes to sure. the teams that we were playing against. To a point that they they decided that I would not play infield. Oh. They would, I would I'd rather be a goalkeeper and not play infield. Yeah, but. Uh, because their numbers don't balance if I'm inside there. So I'd be a goalkeeper. So I'd be like excluded from the players in field and then be a goalkeeper. And then after that, uh, because now, you see, the, the, the fields that we used to create were small, so you could hit a shot from uh, the goalkeeper position to the sure. other goal and you could score. So, so I would do that and then they expelled me from being in the field now. Wow. So you can't play. You have to sit outside. And you'll dribble as well sometimes. Yes. <laughs> because I would dribble, like get past everyone and then score. So, and then they said, no, you can't play, you have to sit outside. So I formed a team. Yeah. From as early as, what, 12, 13 years old, 14, now I had a team. Wang Chairman. Wang Chairman. Oh, basically. Okay. <laughs> so I began the chairman. Okay. Yeah, because I couldn't play. Then I had to, like, move uh, and go join a, a team that was, like, a 
sort of properly structured. Is this vultures? No, 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 no. Okay. Local team. Oh, it's okay. Eleven aces. Okay. So now they had, they were playing like normal games, like eleven v eleven, playing against other teams from other uh, locations around the area, or other villages around the area. Yeah. So then I joined the team. That's when I started now participating fully. Yes. When it comes to uh, playing football, and then continued on and on, then to Greenpoint, uh, to what you call Riverview Spares, then Greenpoint Vultures, then Pirates, and then on and on and on. Yes. I, I was reading um, uh, uh, something, a piece the other day on, on John Barnes. Mm. Um, he was discovered by a taxi driver. He was playing with a couple of boys mm. next mm. to the road. And the taxi driver was driving past and he was like, I saw something there. And then he was taken to Watford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How were you discovered? Okay, you know what? To tell the truth, it has always, like I told you the story when I was four or five, yeah. six, now. it has always been that case where when I played, or in whatever team that I played in, there was always that you know, shining light above me. Yes. You know, where there was recognition, you know, people would be excited, you know, they'd be waving after the game. They'd say, there's this particular player, I used to wear the number 15. Yes. So, uh, all the time, moving from that to school, when I participated in school to number 15 come league yes to the Volacom league and they, 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 that was the story so I think that grew momentum and then also it, uh, it attracted some recognition from uh, different sectors in the industry where people sort of had an idea about me because they, obviously the whole of Newcastle would know uh, about me because I'm involved and uh, most of the time people talk about me. Yeah. And then I got in, involved in a tournament in, in Durban, uh, when I look at tournament, it's a, it's a district tournament, but I was representing a different district, because my district in Amateur didn't select me. They didn't even, uh, they didn't even notice that I was there, you know. So I was never selected in that district. Mind you, that like, uh, a player playing in the highest league in the, uh, in the district, which is the Vodacom League, because our team was, 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 the, was the team that was playing in the highest league in the district. Sure. With a lot of good players, but when it comes to the tournament, no selection. They would only select players from certain areas, like Puma Dadeni, you know, and other areas. So then, uh, when I moved to Greenpoint Vultures, the, the coach of Greenpoint Vultures, uh, his name was Temba Piru. We used to play with him at Greenpoint Vultures. Then he, retired and then he was coaching the district uh, team. So then he, he asked me, I was at Val Technicon at the time. Step. Sure. So when I finished writing, he said I must come straight to uh, to Lady Smith. So okay. I, I didn't go through the process of the selection and all of that. Yes, he just yes, added yes, me yes. To, into, into the team. So I joined them and went to uh, Deben, we played the, in, in the tournament and that's where who won the tournament, in fact. That's when now uh, Pirates recruited me from, from, the, from the team where they took us. I think it was about 15 of us. 15? Yeah, they took us to Joburg for a match against their reserves. Yeah. So when we got there, then we played a game against the reserves. So Augusto was there. Yeah, yeah. And then I think I played barely five minutes. And then they pulled me out, you know. So I'm thinking, well, uh, that's why are you not John? <laughs> How can you pull me out of yeah, minutes? Yeah. Not giving me enough chance to, to show my skills. Yeah. But uh, only to find that uh, they pulled me out because I had been selected first. Uh, so they took three of us. Okay. Yeah, straight to the to the pirates team. That's how I was recruited. Now at pirates. Um but There's the challenges that you experienced uh, when you were um, playing football, you know, uh, at, at when you started, and how did you overcome them at that stage? You know, firstly, in, at, at Pirates, I got affected by, uh, I wouldn't even say politics, uh, but I was affected by the dynamics okay. inside uh, the team, where you found that uh, uh, so-and-so 
is operating in his position and so and so is operating in his position and representing their own interest and having their own you know sort of ideas yeah and uh, protecting their own interests so now when this in, uh, when this uh, particular individual now uh, his own interests are not uh, fulfilled yes then uh, it's either you fall here or here or here or you find a way to have everyone in your in your basket so now the problem was that i fell in one basket but the other ones now then it created a problem within the the, the structure of the team so now only to find that the one in this other basket was more influential at the time you know mm. so it was more influential at the time so to, to a point that it would make uh, any decision and everything when it comes to how your how your stay uh, at the club uh, becomes dependent on him you know so now I got affected by that but luckily I got to know about it uh, two years into my stay there uh, someone told me yeah, that these are the dynamics this is what's happening the best way for you to do is to do a b c so i decided that the best way for me uh, to, to to be able to launch my career would be to move somewhere else luckily yeah. uh, when i spoke to uh, the chairman yes because uh, i met i met him face to face when i spoke to him he understood and he really didn't give me a problem like that yeah. guy didn't give a problem and he ordered that they give me a clearance on, on Monday. I met him on Friday, so come back on, on Monday and uh, give me a clearance. Because I'm saying it's, it's the dynamics because of how things happen. Like I got yeah. to, to Pirates, we trained with the first team. They took us to the first team. Yeah. Where there was all these players, Abu, Sapunda, Jerus Kusana, Tabongomeni, Tabongomeni, Bibisi, Steve Lekule, all these players, all Villaraz and all of them. So it is a mix of young, talented players and old uh, like uh, experienced uh, campaigners so it was very intimidating but i got there and out of the three i remained yes uh, in the first team and the coach liked me Kijen. yes he liked me a lot uh, contrary to what i'm reading here now yeah he liked me a lot and he wanted to play me the very next game the very next weekend but then there were issues with my registration blah 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 because of this camp this basket i mentioned you know and it just made things difficult for me to be registered it was supposed to be a simple process uh, because the clearance was there everything was there but it just dragged and dragged and dragged i got frustrated and then it was sad and then someone took over and then you know addressed his own personal issues as well so it became like you know a frustrating period which shouldn't have been because i think at Paris i should have uh, started training with the first team on monday played on saturday that's how uh, the coach that's how highly the coach was was rating me at the time you, you are quoted then in one of your interviews back then saying that your stay at paris was confusing it was. That, that's what I'm trying to explain now. One moment you are rated highly and everyone wants, you, wants to see you play. The next moment you are just uh, sort of what? Uh, idling to yeah. stay, you know, and not knowing where, where you're going. You're sort of stagnant and the, the next moment you don't know What's, what's going to happen with you? You are out now uh, on loan as to why you don't understand. Change of coaches. This coach now sees different, sees you differently. Yes. And you're thinking that, okay, what is it? What am I doing wrong? What's, what's going on? You know? So it was confusing in that, in that sense. And nobody's talking to you at the same time. So you're just there being a part of the a, 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 a first team. Because I never, people must understand one thing, I was never with the reserves in Paris. Not even once was I with the reserves. You are in a company of some of the best players in the country at that time. 
Tabang Libisi, Polen, Tabo Mgobeni, OJ Mabizela. But how is this experience like? I mean, all the way from, from Newcastle, how was it like? Because I have read some stories about Tabang, <laughs> you know, very, uh, may his soul rest in peace, a very good friend of mine. Yeah, uh, how was it like? Yeah. It's very intimidating. <laughs> like I said, it's very intimidating. Because I walked into the change room they took me to mayfair yes for my first training so i was staying next to the training ground yeah so when i was go so they 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 they, 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 they came and fetched me to take me to training so they just leave me there they yeah say, training is in there or, or change room is in there sure so go change and then join the other players in training so i'm walking alone <laughs> into the change room yeah so now I open the door and then boom, all these big stars. Sure. <laughs> I almost closed the door and turned back. <laughs> no, so, I almost I almost closed the door and turned back. Like, yo. The intimidation I felt there, man. And at that very same time, they're not so welcoming. But because now they start Umunga, talking. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you they start talking, man. Ah Mari Paris just tell no one knows what the land is in your soul. Who do you sit next to? Okay, uh, I'm going to try and remember. Uh, oh, so, yeah. You sit next to Tso? Yes. So, as I walk in, so they start now throwing shade. Yeah. Yeah, they start throwing shade. Tabang uh, there, Steve. Ah, Steve. Ah, so, so, pass away the Muntulo. Yeah, yeah. And then, so calls me. So, how do I do? I know so shall I yeah, sure. So I go and sit next to you too. I think there were other guys about Nane, yeah. Kanya, Jimmy, and Jabombule. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. So I go sit with them. And then um, there was also Pule's table. Okay. Yeah, I was a, still a kid manager. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, Pule, yeah, I, I know from, Pule. He likes playing with the guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Castle. Oh, okay. So he's, he's Top lead. also welcome me. He said, I don't know, I don't mind these ones. We'll be fine. Yeah. So he took care of me, gave me soccer boots, gave me my kids, and just took me through a few things that I needed to know. Then training began. But the ones who got into the field of play, yeah. Now that's where I end my respect. Yes. Yes, yes. Look, Looking back, um, you are at Parade 2002. Um, you leave, I think, you sign in 2002, you leave. 2003 mm. um, are you how do you feel about not getting into the pitch and showing your god-given talent when you look back now now that you've, you've retired when you look back at that, that era look it's a it's not a regret but I would have loved to have uh, give, to have been given a chance to show my potential, especially at that time, because it was going to test me. Yeah. I was very, I was young, like coming straight from amateur. Yeah. Not having any sort of experience of a, a, a sort of a structured professional setup, uh, because it was going to be easy if I had maybe started with the reserves or junior teams, and then then you get a feel or an understanding of a professional setup. So for me, it was straight on, and there was a possibility or potential for me to move from being an amateur uh, this week and then next weekend uh, you are playing in the, in the a, Premier League. A, yeah, professionally. Yeah. yeah. So it was going to be a big test for me, which was going to be very interesting uh, because I was going to be thrown in the deep end. Now yeah. it was going to, you know, it was going to depend how I, I fell. And I felt, I felt that, that I was robbed of that chance, yes. Yeah. Um, but I'm not regretting. What, what transpired because it sure. taught me a lot. Sure. Because now when I moved from Paris to Celtic, then as I had, you know, my mind was like clearer and I had a bit of understanding on how football works, especially on the professional level and uh, even the football business, you, you know, and understood it better. So when I got to Celtic, then I was able to actually be able to handle myself and in a position to you know carry myself in a, in a in a in a manner that was suitable for the professional level but how though because you were straight from uh, newcastle mm. and already 
Ukuluma no chairman about your clearance and you wanting to leave the club. And at some stage, you went to Dangerous Takis for, for a month. Yes, and then yes, when yes. they wanted to loan you out, you refused. Yes, I refused, yeah. But yeah. who is representing you? I mean, who start up when it's been to say, how, 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 how does it get there? I mean, at your age at that time. Yeah, it's, 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 it's fascinating, but it's, it's, a, it's a type of a character that uh, is in me, yeah. it's inbuilt, and the personality, the type of person I am. Uh, because to even uh, Makanya called me after I had left. He said, where are you? I said, oh, no, I've left. I got my clearance and left. He says, you got your clearance. He said, yeah, I got my clearance and left. You know? So you understand that uh, uh, the complex, uh, the complexities of uh, uh, the whole trans transaction yeah. were understood by the fellow players. Yes, you know? and they understood exact extent of uh, uh, of the difficulty. Yes, uh, when, when it comes to me living, but I was able to do that, and f in a, in a peaceful manner. Okay, um, not in a manner that was like uh, sure. Know, uh, disrespectful and stuff. Which happened, which, which sort of happened throughout my career where all my, my movements yeah. have been peaceful and have been, you know, there hasn't been like any noise made or animosity, you know. So I was able to do that and uh, I, I, I was able to do that myself and, and be brave enough. Because if, imagine in your hometown, you assigned a pilot yeah. from, straight from your hometown. Yes. Probably the only player or the second player, I don't know, I don't remember any other. Yeah. I know there are players from Chiefs who are yes. who yeah. played for Chiefs. Who are from yeah. But Kansas. not not, not but Pirates. Pirates yeah. Yeah. So you were that player that signed the Pirates. So there was a lot of noise about it. Yeah. You know, even in my small uh, place in Mendoza. Yeah. You know, they were excited about it. Now you've lost that opportunity. You've, you've just sort of failed in, in their eyes. Yeah. Uh, because now you're moving. You've got your clearance. Not knowing where you're going. So you take your clearance, not knowing where you're going. Yes. You haven't found the team yet. You take your clearance, you go s stay with a friend. You move out of that uh, place the, 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 that belongs to the club. You go stay with a friend. Why do you ponder about your next move? And now a lot of talk is coming from your hometown, you know that uh, he failed, blah, blah, blah. What was he thinking? We knew he wasn't good enough. There were all of that. So now, that's, that's, that defines the character in me to say that, okay, just because I don't have an option, and it's just because uh, this is sort of a lifetime opportunity yeah. and a huge opportunity for me. Yeah. It's a big thing to sign for them. doesn't necessarily have to reduce me to losing my self in exactly. the process. Yeah. yeah. I can't lose myself. So I have to protect myself, my true self, and trust in, in the fact that in the in, in the faith that my potential will get me through. Yes. If I have to get back to where I was or yeah. where I was supposed to be, I will get back. You know. So that's the that's the bravery that I had at the time, which I also don't understand where, where, where it comes from. That's why I'm saying it's inbuilt, it's innate. During this time, you are also going through an experience of uh, losing your mother. Yes, yes. And not just my mother, I just lost my brother a, a year ago. And then that year I lost my, uh, my mother. So it was the tough, toughest, toughest period of, 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 of of my life, in fact, yeah. at that moment, yeah. So, having also, having to go through issues at work, you know, where you felt your dreams are, again, like you're realizing your dreams and then the next thing, things are just falling apart. Yeah. And then you find yourself now not having a team, you know, so it's, it's, just, it's just so many losses in, in a short space of time that needed really one to be brave, very, very, very brave and courageous, you know, and have a, a very hard rock yeah. that and type of a, a heart. 
But then what I, what I always relied on was football. Fit, football will reward you. Yeah. If you give it what it wants. Okay. Yeah. If, if you are playing, if you give football what it wants, yeah, it will reward reward you one way or another. Yeah. You know, he can do what he wants to do. However, exclude you. But yeah. if you do justice to football, and you have natural potential, yeah, there's no way he can I like exclude that. you forever. I like that. And, and it happened. Exactly. So every now and then, he calls on me, save him, plays me, exclude me. I'm like, okay. So now I grew, that's why I grew arrogance when it comes to football. Yes, yes, yes. Like that, that, that I think he ignited that inside me. To yes. Me. You must be arrogant, even against, sometimes against the coach. Yes. Against anyone, against fans. Yes, yes. You know, because uh, you, you, you trust in your potential and not everyone is going to approve. Yeah. So I, like that was built in that period. Interesting that you mention um, the fans because you at Celtic. By the way, I, I, uh, uh, you posted a picture on Twitter yesterday. Mm. A very emotional picture. Um, what do you make of the events at Celtics now? And is it where you played your best football? It's disappointing. It's disappointing uh, because uh, you can't take... Uh, well, to be honest, I think they've... I don't know if messing up is, is the right way to, or right phrase to, to describe what they've done to Celtic. That's what they've done, you know. From a brand that was taken off the ground, dragged back off the ground, and placed in the position that it was in. So solid, so strong, powerful and reliable brand, you know? And and you destroy it like that. Before, mm. you, before you sell it, you start by destroying it mm. slowly. And what's left of it, and then you decide to sell it. Mm. After you have destroyed what's left of it, after you've destroyed it and then, then left a little bit of it because it was still there but it wasn't the same anymore and it was coming and it was like, for a long time it was coming because that brand doesn't deserve to be treated in that in the manner it was treated and it's a brand that was supposed to be handled by people who are passionate one passionate about football two who understand how to handle brands like that you, you need to understand, you can't just get into football and buy a team like Celtic without understanding how to handle a brand like that. No. Because then you're going to destroy it. You can't, you can't do that. That's the first problem. Let alone other things. You were not buying a club. Yes, uh, who bought a club recently? T team bought uh, Highlands Park, you know. Mm. He's buying a club. You understand? He's looking to turn it into a brand. Mm. But when you buy Celtic, you are buying a brand. So it's completely lost now because it's gone to a completely different location with different ambitions, with different, you know, uh, dynamics. You, you, it's lost. Did you at some stage, obviously as one of the, of the former players, and also you, having played a huge role getting them promoted back to the Premier League, do you reach out to, to the management, um, you know, at some stage, or how was your relationship generally with the management at Celtic? You know what, Lutando, uh, I'm one former player who doesn't feel football owes him anything, or any club owes him anything. Yeah. You know, so I would never reach out to any club for help. No, I would never. Yeah. Whether it be Chiefs, whether it be Celtic or any other club, I would never do that yeah, because I don't feel they own me. Yeah. So now, I feel that me being at Celtic, I was representing my interest at first, primarily. My own yeah. interests, my goals, my dreams. Yeah. And they were a channel for me to do that, which I achieved and happy about and proud about, you know. But I wasn't doing it for Celtic. No, I wasn't doing it for the fans. Yep. No. I was doing it to achieve my own personal dreams, personal goals. Yes. Yeah. And then, but it so happened that I'm in a setup of a team. Yeah. In someone else's entity where I have to do it. You know? Sure. And then, which is uh, is associated with a certain set of uh, of fans. 
that I associated with the team. So I go in there, I do what I do. So if, uh, if when I'm done, it's gone. Whatever I've written there is for me. Someone else can use it or someone else can you know, refer to it, however, the media, the club, yep. they can do whatever they want. But for me, it's for me to say, I wrote my history there, I take my history and I go. It's, 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 it stays with me. To a point that um, when they opened Cesar Ramabud, yes. um, I'm not saying that I'm the biggest thing that has ever happened to Celtic, yes. the most important thing that has happened to, to Celtic, but the kind of impact yes. in terms of rebuilding the brand yeah. first to promote it yeah yeah huge uh, role i play and also to position the team yeah and, and make it into a brand that yeah. it suddenly was yeah and most of that happened there at, at cesar Ramadu. yes and now you renovate cesar Ramadu. you don't even have the, the distance to invite so extend an invite say catch your own flight yes catch your own flight or drive your own car just on us with your with your presence when we uh, open the refurbished Cesar Ramabuto, you see. Those are the kind of things, but I'm not saying that I'm, uh, I'm what, I'm, you are, I'm have, I've had feelings. You, yeah, you're bitter about bitter it. Bitter so, about yeah. it, no. I'm just stating to you that uh, having contact with former clubs yeah. sometimes is not so uh, healthy. For yeah. you as a as a former player, do what you do. When it's time for you to go, go. You've done what you've done. Yeah. Like be proud of what you did. Focus on something else that uh, that's coming up. Sure. Mm -hmm. You're not a tree. <laughs> I'm not a tree. <laughs> no. But is it where you play the best football, Celtic? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. You know why I'm gonna say that? Yes. Uh, because uh, one, at Celtic. Uh, people always get excited over a new thing. That's one thing. South Africans are like that. Yeah. They get excited over something that comes up now today. Yes. And then once they get used to it, there's something else that's new. That's it. So in their eyes, though, or in their minds, still painted like in, in uh, an El Volvo song. The, the only song that rings in people's heads is. Uh, uh, sure. The uh, heat. Uh, yeah. That heat here. Yeah. So package Yeah, yeah. He, can, he could have, he might have done better songs afterwards. Yes. But the main doesn't one matter. That it doesn't matter. Yeah. You can talk about any other artist. That is, uh, Duma Slela is the same thing. You know. So people, the, 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 the very first time they lay their eyes. Yes. On something. Yes. It, it's a lasting impression. Now what happens? Yeah. Because now. They know about Tulutando yes. and what he's doing. So there's more scrutiny now when it comes to your offering. There's more scrutiny, then there's more expectation yes. as well. Yes. Uh, they don't know how you came about to producing that record. Yes. Maybe you maybe you you, you, you recorded recorded that record in a in a shack. Yes. And then it came out as a hit. To them it's a hit but now that you are now a lutando that's established they want to know what where you recorded the song and then they will find out that you recorded your current song in a shack now it's a big issue now you are a, a fraud yeah you you know so it, 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 the difference is more scrutiny when it comes to uh, football the, the difference between when you come up and you establish, I I achieved in, 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 in next season in that one season before I went overseas. Yeah, I was the player that each and every team was trying to nullify. Yes, Pito, Pito, Coach Pito, uh, Coach uh, who, who else was the coach at the time in the other teams? Uh, Gamonde and Neil told you. Yeah. All those coaches. And Kapas. Yes, all those coaches. When they came up, even a Paris coach at the time, yeah, Okonko was always like shepherding me, like you, you know, yeah, like he's gonna get it a double pay. Yeah, maybe, you know. maybe that's so, why they paid you here. <laughs> 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 maybe that's why they paid you here. So you understand? Yeah, yeah. 
a good season from the start at Chiefs yeah. until February. Yes. And then Sundowns over Texas. I remember that season where Sean Bartlett, where Kazem Dongle was, was a top scorer. Yes. Just look back at the kind of who was supplying that yeah. to them. Yeah? And we were at some point number one in February. Yes, Denver, yes. Then Sundance overtook us. Yeah. And then you tell me, I played my best football at Celtic by winning SA Super 8. Yes, and a couple of games, you know. But you tell me, if you look at that, yeah. and you tell me that I get to choose and then play one season, there were other players. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There were other I'm just I'm just gonna talk about one season. Yes. There were other players that were there. Yes. Two seasons before. Or, or a season before working with the coach. Yeah. The whole season. Two seasons. But then he decides to take me when he goes overseas. Yes. And there were other good players, right? So you are you equivalent? If you are a football person yeah. and you understand football, yeah. you see what I call it. It's a, I wanna, if, if someone says that, I just say, I'll, I'll ask the ball. Yeah. You because I feel I might have played uh, better football at Elves as well than at Celtic. Love you. Yeah. You leave Celtic. Mm. Um, in fact, after the Nations Cup, I know that uh, you start talking to Chiefs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and all that, and um, what is Bob Imdaung or the chairman saying to you on what is going to be your role at Kaiser Chiefs when you come? Uh, okay, they say they want to build a team around me, uh, which is the case also just before I left there was their uh, presentation that they want to give me a five-year contract yes uh, because they want to build a team around me that's what they said when I first got to Chiefs yes yeah which was uh, which I understood um, and in that season that first season uh, yeah it, it sort of showed me. yes yeah in how the season, like I explained the season, in how the season went. Yeah. How instrumental my role was yeah. in the in the team. Yeah. Yeah. And they were looking to build on that. Yes. Because you, you, Chairman is, is a very knowledgeable man when it comes to football. Yes. Like he looks at food, he looks at things differently to how a fan looks at things. Yeah. Uh, when it when, when it comes to football. So that was his plan. Actually. Yeah. And unfortunately, or fortunately for me, then the, the, the move came about. But that was, it was going to that direction. If if I didn't have ambitions of playing overseas, but I had strong, very strong ambitions of playing overseas. Yeah. Compared to building myself a chief. Yeah. You... But Bulatela jersey number fifteen get cocky pen. Bulatela jersey number fifteen at Celtic jersey number fifteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there expectation growing up? Say, yeah, dinga Bulatela number fifteen one day. Um, is it discussed during the the, the negotiations? The, the 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 issue of the jersey. Yes, it was discussed, but. Uh it was made clear that it's, it's not possible. Because which I was comfortable with. Did you ask for the chairs? Yes, yes, yeah. I did. Full like Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, because at the time, uh, growing up and when I was at Celtic and then I joined Chiefs, obviously my idol was Doctor. Yeah. And uh, I was open about that. And it was an inspiration. Yeah. Because of the likeness in. in, in, in how we actually played. Yeah. You know, and so there was that sort of likeness, even though it's not exact, you know. Yeah. Because uh, mine was more direct. Yes. Yeah, than, than he was. 
yeah. you know. And mine was not uh, as flashy or as stylish yes. as his. More you know. industrious. Yes. Yeah, mine was yeah. more, you know, using you know, side mirrors. Of, yes, different <laughs> type of, uh, of uh, you know, attributes. Yeah. They are more direct. Yes. You know, yeah. More calculative, you know, and less involvement. So for him, it was a, a different type of uh, uh, an approach to, to the game. But there was likeness yeah. in terms of doing things, yeah. in terms of the, uh, how we played. Yeah. So it was discussed, but as soon as they said, no, it's not possible, I said, okay, no, it's not, it's okay. Then there was a chase number 14 that was uh, that are available. I said, okay, fine, any number is fine. Yeah. But then later on, then there was a, a, a number 10, then they decided that they'd give me a number 10. Sure. Yeah, so then I, I, I took that then. Between 2006 and 2016, mm. Newcastle stands still. Yeah. Siabong Angosi Youth Festival, Siabong Angosi yes, Foundation. Yes, yes, yes. Um, why did you feel there was a need for you to do what you're doing for the community back home? But the suffering I went through and the neglect from that part of the, of the, of the country is the reason why I decided to do something like that. And as, 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 as we implemented it over the years, then we also got better and better and uh, improved it yeah. and made it even better. But the impact, uh, I feel that going forward, because I'm still going to bring it back, yeah. I would like to focus now on the impact when it comes to uh, recruitment, yeah. uh, scouting recruitment and placement. Yeah. That would be the focus. So whatever programs that we bring along or that we design now related to that particular uh, whole project are going to be uh, directed towards uh, those topics, which is scouting, recruitment, placement and uh, management uh, after that. Because I feel that that's one thing that's, that changes lives. Because uh, if you provide someone with a football career, then you change their lives. You know? If you provide someone with a, an administrative career in, a, a, in, a, in football or in sports, yeah. then you change their lives. Or any other career that's associated with the game or with sports, then you, you, you actually change their lives. And that's our... That's our focus going forward yeah. but great initiative that actually you know, mobilized yeah. that part of, uh, of, of the country and there was a lot of excitement about it and you achieved a lot when it comes to it. Yeah and you you told me that um, the Legends game mm -hmm. uh, where you featured alongside uh, doctors and uh, ace cruises and, and other chief legends it had a benefit feel for you. Yes. Why? It had a benefit feel because of how actually Chiefs uh, were so generous when it comes to arranging it. Uh, the chairman, Jessica, you know, I was in, uh, in contact uh, with Jessica a lot and we facilitated and Abdullah uh, as well, facilitated the whole process. There was just the feel of, you know, token of appreciation from the club, you know, and for the and the way also the, the, the entire crew, the legends, how they actually embraced it and carried themselves, you know, and did everything that I asked of them uh, on the day. It was like a, it, it, it was written token of appreciation all over it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm very grateful to the chairman, grateful to uh, Jessica, uh, Abdullah and the entire uh, chiefs. Uh, family because that really was special. You never see an under-19 team, KZ Chiefs team, playing anywhere. Yeah. But they came and played in my, my tournament. You never see the legends yeah. playing anywhere. Yeah. You know, it's very difficult. You, know, you have to part with the, a lot of money for, yeah. for them to, to yeah. be part of Come to. So for Chiefs to be, actually be the ones that put them together yeah. and you know, be part of organizing the whole thing was, was really special for me. Yeah. And um, obviously, this is uh, the back of the season. You just won the league, the last, the, the, the second title. Mm. And your decision to, to retire is, is a bit delayed. 
Yeah. Uh, I remember I left for the Eastern Cape and yeah. it looked like you were going to play. Yes. And then I, I, I come back and all of a sudden I've decided to retire. No, the, the, the desire, the desire was, was gone. Yeah, the desire was gone. I didn't feel any fire in yeah. me anymore. You know, just felt, you know, this is the time. You only played this game because of the passion, the desire, yeah. the fire that's in you. Yeah. So if all of that is gone and you feel that you've done enough to make yourself proud through, uh, for, your, for the rest of your life, to smile about for the rest of your life. And yeah. if you look at how, uh, how you mapped out your dreams in the yeah. beginning and look at what you've achieved, it's like, it's, it's satisfying. What else would I be playing for out there? There was also another uh, consideration. But the main one is that the fire that I had all along suddenly just gone, dimmed, you know? Yeah. And I was like, nah, you know, it's time to move on and focus on other things. And it's a good thing that my first game at Chiefs, I scored, and my very last game at Chiefs, I also scored. So. Yeah. It's also, you know, an opening and closing, you know. Yeah. Way, yeah. No, lovely. And what is, what have you learned? What's, what are some of the valuable lessons you've learned in football? What has football given you as the Mongongos? You know, football, football has given me confidence, man. You know, I think more than anything, because a lot of people lack that when it, when it comes to life in general. And there's a lot of people living in inside a certain shell, yeah. you know, where someone with a little bit of confidence, yeah. they can become something that they would even be surprised of, you know, that they would, they, they can even surprise their own selves. I think the most valuable lesson that football has taught me is confidence. Because with confidence, you can, be, you can, you can, you, you can equip yourself with all sorts of skills. You know, and you can go anywhere. Yeah. You know, and you can be smart. You can be, you know, talented. Or, but if you don't have the confidence in yourself as a person first, and as a in your abilities, then all of that is a waste because you're gonna sit at home with it. You're always gonna be, you know, you're scared to get into to go into this house because you're not confident. You're scared to walk across. You're scared to talk to so-and-so because yep. you know, you're know you not confident. You're scared to try out something because you are not confident. So I think the most, other than all the other lessons, you know, the most important lesson is confidence. Yeah. You're obviously doing work for Supersport now and um, also involved in some of the projects. Mm. Of course, you, have, you need to have salary. If you didn't have to work mm. every day, what would be Sebong and Gosi doing? If I didn't have to work every day? For salary, what, what would you be doing? Mm, I think I would be doing a lot of uh, uh, philanthropy work. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd be doing a lot of that um, because I'm, I'm passionate about that. Yeah. I'm passionate about that in improving people. Yeah. yeah, I think improving people, making people better uh, in, the, in, in their lives. I think that's one thing that uh, I'd probably be doing. I'd invest. I'd be investing my time in helping people, doing doing uh, uh, projects that actually improve and make people better. That's what I would be doing. Apparently, you are grooming a number ten at home. <laughs> How good is he? <laughs> <laughs> you know, with this whole COVID, uh, I'm, I, I don't, I don't like to channel him towards a certain direction. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, you know, follow wherever he goes and whatever he wants, whatever interest he takes, he takes. And he's, he's, uh, I've, 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 he's asked me to play, to, to get him involved in, in in certain teams, certain games. Yeah. Yeah, and, and he's looked like he has a bit of talent, mm. which I was surprised myself, you know. Yeah. I never taught him anything. I don't train him. Yeah. I don't do anything, but he yeah. has a bit of talent. He has the pass, he has the, you know, the vision, the brains, and the technique. I'm like, 
where do you get all this you know yeah so we'll see what what, what happened because with this whole COVID uh, having distracted the, yeah. the amateur football but now things are, start, are slowly starting to get back to normal so we'll get him involved and see what he can do but I won't push him yeah yeah and whatever he wants to do it's it's his own free will uh, besides being um, um rapper, you, you, you made reference. You made reference to a lot of uh, music, and uh, I don't think uh, people know that you can you can rap, man. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. What what else do people don't know about Siabongangos? Um, well, I'm a, I'm I'm a very spiritual person. Yeah. Yeah, very spiritual person. Very connect, connect, connected to my roots, yeah. you know, and uh, there's just a, a part of me that carries a huge responsibility. Yes, you know, that obviously is not uh, open to the to the public. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a part of me that carries a huge responsibility, which is something that um, uh, takes primary. consideration in anything I do in, in life. Yeah. So I'm saying that if I wasn't playing football or doing anything else, that's what I'd be doing. Yeah. Football, what has been the highlight? You were playing football, played football, professional obviously, 2002-2015. What do you regard as the highlight of, of, of your career? Obviously, making a move to Germany yeah. Yeah, has to be like, the highlight of my career. It's just like a, a dream come true. Going to play in a league like that, making a move, you know, and seeing yourself being part of that type of, uh, uh, of being part of uh, football in that level, I think it was the best moment. Great. Yeah, I had a great moment. Yeah, you know. yeah. Great Obviously crowds there. For Chiefs yeah. and playing for Bafana Bafana, winning cups. Yeah. You know, all of that. But you know, the, the main thing, the, the highlights, the biggest highlight is signing for a Bundesliga team. Because that's not easy. Played in, in Great Stadiums there. Yeah. Selo in Luna Park. Yeah. 80,000, man. 80,000, yeah. Uh, no, Stadium, yeah, uh, at the arena. Yeah, arena. It's called it's a Munich. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bayern Munich, uh, the, the their main stadium. Arena, yeah. yeah, and uh, Schalke. Schalke Stadium. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So yeah, I think it is, uh, it is the, the, the best moment of my life. Yeah, yeah. and um, when all is said and done. How would you want to be remembered? Uh, yo, you mean in terms of football? As Siabonga Ngosi? Yes, yeah. Um, I, want, I want to be remembered as a player that uh, actually uh, entertained for one, uh, because I find that a lot of yeah. people uh, that are meet in the streets. That made an impact in my life, yeah. entertaining me because I used to love watching me play. Yeah. Uh, a player, the only thing I remember is a player that entertained. A player that at some point uh, brought something new. It was more like a breath of fresh air. And then, and the player, because I'm talking that in, in different uh, sort of. Uh, Outlooks uh, because of what we did at, uh, at Celtic, you know, what happened at Celtic, and what also happened in, in terms of you being at, at Chiefs twice and you know wearing the same jersey number twice, you know. Yeah. Uh, that that's like something that's very like, uh, abnormal. Yeah. But overall, I'd like to be remembered as a player that came, 
showed uh, a great style of football and entertained uh, in, the, in the process. If you have to go back to Mdozo playing with Sipo, uh, is that Swaz? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swazi, yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. Mm. Oh, he played football. Yeah, I played football. Well, I thought he can only... He was wearing a number 10. We are peg, to pass. He was wearing a number 10. Oh, okay. Mm. If we had to go back to Mdozo as a four, five-year-old, mm. um, what is it that you'd want to do differently now? What is it that I would want to do differently? Yeah. Like, uh, that you've done in your life, say, hey, this one, I wish I had done this. What is it that you'd, you'd like, you, you would have liked to do differently? And the one thing I would have loved in terms of football yeah. was to uh, move overseas as early as possible. Okay. Like, even, I don't, I don't care, even if I'm 13, 14. Yeah. Move overseas. That's the only thing I would have done differently. I feel that would have made me probably one of the best players in the world. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, this is a conversation with my friend, um, his family, Siabong uh, Ngosi. In Germany, they called him uh, the Michael Balak, <laughs> the black Michael Balak. Um, ironically, he was nicknamed Doctor at Paris. Mm. Wow, and Newcastle, they still call him Radushi. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching uh, Lutando Zubego TV. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so that you don't miss any of our exclusive content. And I just want to thank my special friend and my special guest today, Siamonga Nkosi. Thank you very much for doing this with us. Uh, it's a special uh, broadcast um, we're celebrating a year. Uh, we hope that um, we're going to grow. Have you been watching the channel, though? Yes, I've been watching. Okay. I follow the channel. You follow the channel? I subscribe. Also. You subscribe also? Yeah. Okay. And also everyone at, at home? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I don't know about myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, no, thank you so much, man. Uh, yeah. See you. Where are we celebrating? The birthday? <laughs> okay. Secret location. Yeah, secret location. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, thanks, Jam. Sure. I enjoyed it. Cheers. Sure.